it's time to talk about the Dario Gento classic, uh, one of his best movies, and one of the just most beautiful movies ever made, and that is Suspiria. Uh, this isn't the only movie from Argento that I've reviewed. I've also done Deep Red and, um, what's it called, Tenebrae, and Deep Red, as of right now, is my favorite Argento movie. Uh, this one's definitely a close second. Um, I go back and forth between Suspiria and Deep Red, but I think I prefer Deep Red slightly over this movie. Now, what's the plot for this crazy movie? Well, it's about an American newcomer who goes to a prestigious German ballet academy, and she comes to realize that the school is a front for something sinister amid a series of grisly murders. So let's just get right into it. Let's talk about the positives. The first thing that you'll notice when watching this movie is the score when it plays over the credits and you know Susie's at the airport and gets in a taxi the music that's playing over all that and keeps repeating throughout most of the movie the score in this movie is phenomenal I absolutely love it it's so catchy it's so unique and it's just so damn awesome and I heard that it was uh, made before this movie was ever shot so they were like playing the score on set, having the actors react to the music. Another thing I love about this movie is that it is just immensely atmospheric. It is eye candy. The visuals in this movie, just the way it looks, the lighting is absolutely gorgeous. The set designs, the look of the academy, the, in the interiors, even the exterior of the building, which I think was like a set. And even the other apartment building that they go to in the beginning, like every place for the most part, it just looks very unique and colorful. It's very vivid. It just looks beautiful to your eyes. It's a f very fun movie to just look at. You don't even need to listen to what's happening. It's just, you can watch it on mute and still enjoy it. And the lighting seems to be like supernaturally caused. Like the way some scenes are lit, it's because of, you know, what's going on. It's like whenever the killer pops up, there's like this red and blue light that comes with him. It's kind of like when you're watching a creep show at the end of each segment, like there's the supernatural like red and blue lights. It's not natural at all. And this movie has some pretty cool, shocking, very stylish kills in it. The opening kill and the whole opening 20 minutes really is just fantastic. You got some decent gore in here. You got a woman getting stabbed a bunch in her heart and there's an awesome hanging that competes for like the best hanging in a horror movie ever this and like the omen and yeah a shocking mean kill later on with a dog uh, very reminiscent of the beyond and just the kills in this movie are very creative and awesome to look at and i really like jessica harper's performance as a uh, susie banyan i just i really like her presence on screen she looks beautiful and i think she gives a good performance funny enough this movie is about a ballet school but they don't even really focus on that at all there's one scene really where they're rehearsing and that's it and i like that i didn't want this movie to spend too much time showing the girls rehearse and you know all that stuff so i'm glad they just showed one scene and then they just got rid of that and focused more on the mystery of what's going on and you know who's behind these grisly murders and i just like how unique this movie is not only visually but the story what genre of film it is i won't spoil you know what's going on behind the scenes at this academy but it plays out like a slasher movie but it's also this other genre of movie that's not usually slasher like I won't say what that genre is but i like that they kind of mix this genre of horror with the slasher genre you got some pov and some brutal you know slashings in it and it's just a very unique way to tell you know this kind of story as for any like nitpicks and you know little complaints of mine uh, i wish there was more of that sassy girl the one who's like you know anyone whose name starts with an s is a snake and they just start making faces at each other like i wanted more of that girl i don't think she dies in this movie i, yeah, I don't think she does and she just kind of like disappears i wish there was more of her in the movie because she was a very quirky fun character and she's only in like the first half so I wish we had more of her, and the story is kind of hard to follow. I've seen this movie three times, and I, I'm i still kind of confused, and I have some questions. A lot of why questions. Why this? Why that? And hopefully you'll give me some answers when I get to my spoiler discussion. And I do wish that the last, like, ten minutes of this movie, the, the climax, it, I think it could have been a little bit better. It's beautifully shot. It looks great, but I just wish it wasn't so easy for you know, Susie to accomplish this task. It just was like, 
in, out, done. And I was like, oh, that's very quick. It wasn't as, you know, satisfactory to me. So final thoughts, I really love this movie. It's damn near flawless. Just a couple of little gripes I have with it, especially just the ending, really. That's my big gripe with it. And you know, funny enough, the tagline of this movie, it's, you know, if there's one thing scarier than the last 12 minutes of this movie, it's the first 80 or something like that. Basically saying that the last 10 minutes or so of this movie is nowhere near as good as the what is before it. So it's just a weird tagline. They didn't really think that one through. But I love the movie. It's beautiful. The cinematography. Love Jessica Harper. The soundtrack is phenomenal. So it's a movie that everyone should watch. So when it comes to Suspiria, this is an Italian classic, an Argento classic that everyone should go out and buy. <coughs> Alright, time for a spoiler discussion. So, I thought it was really weird that the opening of this movie has narration. It's just saying, you know, Susie is arriving at the airport and she's going to go attend this school. And the time is 6 p.m. or whatever, and then that's it. So it's like, okay, that's weird storytelling. Like, we don't, you don't need narration. We can put the pieces together as the movie goes. Okay, she's arriving. You know, clearly she's entering a foreign country. She's new. We don't need the narration at all, so it's just weird. And I think that narration, the narrator is Dario Argento, if I'm not mistaken. And I think it was really interesting how the music kept cutting on and off. Like, when she, there was her POV of the outside of the airport, the music was playing, but then when it cut back to her, inside the airport, the music would cut off. It's almost suggesting that, you know, the music represents the supernatural evil that's waiting for her out there, you know. Something like that. I don't know. I think there's a meaning behind it. Because why did they cut it on and off like that? It's like the music is only outside the airport. But inside, where she's safe, the music's gone. You know, Because the music plays every time something bad's happening. Every time you know the witch is nearby. So I think like the music is with the evil presence. So she arrives at the academy. And she sees a girl leaving, screaming something. But she's like... Over 15 feet away from her, there's a thunderstorm and tons of buckets of rain. And it's this Argento, you know, trope of his that he has in all of his movies where they see or hear something, but they can't quite make out what it is until the third act. And they're like, oh, that's what I saw or that's what I heard. So it's in this movie. It's in like Bird of the Crystal Plumage. It's in so many like Deep Red. You know, I thought I saw something in that painting. Oh, it wasn't a painting. It was a mirror. So this is like an Argento thing, but there's no fucking way she hurt her because of everything I said, the storm, the distance between them, like, is she Ethan Hunt? Was she reading her lips or something? There's no way. She's like, I just heard two words, uh, Iris and uh, secret. And then she puts it all together at the end, like, oh, now I know. It's so unbelievable, but you just have to ignore it. Then we get the first brutal kill in this movie, and she sees, like, the glowing eyes outside the window. That's very creepy. And this hairy-ass arm just breaks through the window. Uh, is that, like, the arm of that uh, handyman who looks like he's deformed almost? He has a really weird face. Is that him? Because we see that he works for the witches later on when they're all, like, convulsing and dying at the end. So he's a part of it. Was that his arm? We don't ever see him without long sleeves. Maybe that was him. I don't know. Just raising some questions here. And but whoever it is, they got some hairy ass arms and they we got another Argento thing here. He shoves the girl's head through the window. We got a lot of window shattering uh, kills in Argento flicks and she just gets flown to the top of the roof, I guess, and she gets stabbed a bunch in the stomach. And you'll notice the lighting changes here. Like every time she's getting stabbed, there's like a red light that appears on her. So it's like the lighting is you know supernatural and it's with the witches. It's like the witches are creating the lighting of the scenes. And that's why, you know, when the witches aren't around, when Susie's at other locations, not every scene is lit very supernatural, like with the reds and the blues and the greens. It's only at the academy and at this place where the witches followed her. So it's like wherever the witches are, that's where the supernatural, you know, colorful lighting it it's like it comes with them. But anyways, getting back to that kill, she falls, again, another window thing. So we get, she goes through two windows, and she goes through the glass roof ceiling, and we get like a twofer here. We got two kills, and because the glass hits the chick below in her face, and this other like metal bar goes through her chest, and I think like right through her throat, and the other girl just gets hung. It's 
awesome. It's a beautiful visual. Like these are beautiful kills. It's like death made to look pretty. Okay, so then we see like the maid at the academy is cleaning a knife or something. And it's like gleaming, there's like a gleam on it and it's like shiny and then she's looking at it and then she starts to feel dazed and she like passes out. Like what's going on here? Like what did, did they drug her at some point? Like I know they're drugging her throughout the rest of the movie every time she drinks like the red wine but she didn't, we didn't see her eat or drink anything before that moment and she was like dizzy. Uh, was the dance session before that scene with the shiny thing or was that after I can't remember it was before so the whole the shiny thing in her face and her getting all like acting all like you know drugged that was before the dance session when, when she passes out and her eyes not her eyes her nose and her mouth are bleeding because she had like a hemorrhage and the doctor comes in I'm guessing he's like the witch doctor he's probably in on it and he's giving her like this new diet and they're drugging her why are they drugging her like she's brand new are they drugging everybody I don't think so because nobody else is acting the way she's acting do they do they make everybody pass out at night so they can go sneak off at that you know time they say every night they go and they get together and have a meeting do they make everybody pass out they drug them all or, or are they just drugging Susie but why are they drugging her she just got there it's not like she's onto them already she just arrived so what's going on here it's almost like they made her get sick because they wanted to get her to live there because she turns them down like no I'm living with this you know, the sassy girl somewhere else, and it seemed to upset the main girl, Blanc, so I think they made her get sick, so that they could be like, oh, so you need to be here so we can take care of you. Is that why they did it? I'm trying to piece it together. So then we get the maggots scene, and you know, this is a gross scene, and it looks like they're killing a lot of maggots. I'm, I'm not sure if PETA uh, protects maggots in film, uh, but if they do, they probably don't like this movie, because they're clearly stepping on real maggots and killing them, and they say the maggots are up there because of the uh, spoiled food. But when they open up that box, it like zooms in and it doesn't look like food. I don't know what it is, but is it like a dead body? That would explain the maggots. And then we get the scene where because of the maggots, they all start to bunk together in like the, uh, the ballet dance room. And they put up all the sheets because I guess they want to separate the girls from the main witch Marcos. But why put her down there? Like that was a risky thing to do because what if... You know, some curious girl pulled back the sheet and saw this old, you know, rotted looking person. I, but she's like invisible towards the end, but she's creating a shadow on the sheet. So it's like she's inform she can't be invisible if she's creating shadows. So why put her down there with them if they're not supposed to be able to see her because she's not normal looking at all? And I don't know, but they're like talking about her snore. And then Susie looks terrified for some reason when the other girl is explaining uh, who Marcos is or like, you know, she's like, that's the directress, you know, that's the, the leader of this place. And she looks terrified. She doesn't know who that is. So why does she look terrified hearing the snoring? Here's another why question. Why did the dog attack the boy? Did they want that to happen? But why would they want that to happen? Just to give them an excuse to fire. If they just want, if they wanted to fire him, just fire him. Don't do a spell on the dog to make it attack the boy. I just, why did the dog attack now? As if it could like smell that these were bad people. Like usually in these supernatural movies, dogs, the dogs can smell or sense an evil presence. But it's been there like every day. But now it's like, oh, these are bad people. I'm going to start attacking them. Like, why did the dog attack? And then, obviously, they put a spell on the dog later on. They're controlling it because they make it attack its own owner, which is just a very mean kill. Like, this poor blind man who depends on this dog to help him out every day ends up, like, this thing kills him. <laughs> it just attacks his throat. It's very much like the beyond, except that's way more graphic and bloody than this one. But I do like, there's, like, a shot there uh, where you can see like the shadows of all the witches like flying by it looked like there was multiple shadows Maybe I'm wrong, but it looked like there was like the shadows of all the witches like flying around on the broomsticks or some shit And I'm glad we don't actually see that stuff because that would just come off as like cheesy if you actually saw Like, you know Blanc and all the other ones on wit on broomsticks flying around So it's more just shadows and you know in your mind you just imagine what's going on, but obviously They did something to the dog to kill him but 
Why did he need to die? Just because he worked for them? He doesn't know their secret. So it's just like they're like, oh, fuck you because your dog bit the boy. So we're going to kill you. And did the dog die? Like they should kill the dog, not the blind guy. The blind guy didn't do anything. And how mean was it when she took his walking cane, threw it across the room and said, get out of here. You find the cane and make your way out. Like, what a bitch. So then Susie's neighbor, she's talking to her in the pool. You know, she's very curious. She wants to solve you know, what's going on, what happened to her best friend who got hung in the beginning. And someone, we get like a POV shot from above the pool, so we know somebody's listening. And if you were suspicious that somebody at this academy, because she thinks that the academy is involved with her best friend's death, in which case, I would keep my mouth shut until I know that the coast is clear. Like, it's such a big room, somebody could be somewhere listening and that's what happened. Someone was listening, and therefore they stole her notes, and they attack her that night uh, when you know Susie's drugged because of the red wine she's been drinking. She's clearly being drugged, so she's all by herself, and she's she runs into that room of uh, barbed wire. Like it doesn't even really look like barbed wire, but I read that it it's supposed to be barbed wire, but it doesn't look like it. It just looks like wire, and she somehow gets like stuck in it. Not sure how that happened, how she was stuck, but then, and how she didn't see it. Like, she's, like, standing on that platform. The room is pretty well lit, so she could, should have been able to see it right below her feet, this whole room full of barbed wire, but she just jumps right in, and then the guy or girl, whoever, comes in. We get a very deep slit throat effect, very close-up shot, and it's very graphic. And then Udo Kier, the German actor, he pops up in this movie. He's the exposition guy, and introduces this other exposition guy. They both give Susie the history of the place. This place was opened up by, it was started by a witch who is supposed to be dead, but obviously that's not true. Marcos is still alive, but she looks like a corpse at the end. And then we get this bat scene that seems like something out of a Falshi movie. And here's another why question. Why is this happening? Is this like a random thing happening? Or is this some other thing happening because of the witches because we see that they can control dogs obviously so they can control bats and why are they making the bat attack her if it is their you know influence that's causing the bat to go crazy so then we get to the finale here she's all by herself they sent everybody away to like a theater for the night so they can be by themselves with Susie because they want to kill her that night so she's walking down the hall she's counting the footsteps that she heard earlier and and she goes into the other room. She solves the, the mystery of what that girl was saying earlier. She finds the secret door. And we see Marcos, whose voice I read was uh, Daria uh, Nicolodi, uh, the wife at the time of uh, Argento. It, she sees her, but then it's just like a shadow at first, but then she's invisible. And then her zombie friend comes out of the closet. That was freaky, the one that got in the barbed wire. She just comes out of the closet. Her eyes look all wide and weird. Like, just she has a very scary face, and she starts coming towards her. It was just a very that's like the scariest scene in the movie. Uh, and then she just stabs Marcos. She sees like her outline because of the lightning. The lighting, she can see like the outline of Marcos. So she just like stabs towards the bed, and then that's it because she stabbed the head of the. The academy, the main, you know, the leader, you, you kill the leader, it kills everybody else. It's kind of like in some vampire movies, you know, you kill the main vampire, it kills all the other ones. So that was just kind of lackluster. It was like, it was starting to get interesting. And she was like, all right, poof, stabs her and then just walks on out. You know, it's not like she had to fight off Blanc and the, the German lady and the handyman who's very hideous, like that guy. Like, there's no confrontation. She just walks around for 10 minutes. And it's, you know, it's beautiful. I like the way it's shot. The music, it's very good, but there should have been more happening on screen. But she just walks in, poof, stabs her, walks out, burning building. You know, you have been watching Suspiria. I love that it says that. It's so weird. It's like the movie ends and everyone's like, oh my God, what the hell did I just watch? You've been watching Suspiria. <laughs> and so that's the end of the movie. Um, so what are your thoughts on Suspiria? Let me know in the comments below. And is it your favorite Argento movie? Where does it stack in your ranking of Argento's movies? Let me know. It's my number two right now. So 
Uh, if you like what you've seen here, you can hit this like button and become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And remember, it's just an opinion. You don't need to get upset about it.